Hello, everybody. Well, we have made it to Thursday now, and it is time to do our map of Southern Oregon. So I already have my title written up here in my best cursive, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. So this map is gonna take up all the rest of my page, all the way out to the borders. And I am just going to start so I'm just gonna do like this little southwest corner of Oregon. So here and over here, there's a lot more Oregon that's gonna just go right off the page or right up to the title. And down here we have California. So the land is also gonna go this way, right off the page. But over here, I have the whole ocean, right? And it just so happened that the south coast of Oregon is kind of an interesting little stretch of coastline. And I'm just going to go ahead and sketch it out here. So actually where Oregon meets up with California, the coast kind of takes a little bend to the south and Brookings right here actually faces south. So our coast has a little bendy line here. And it kind of comes up and around here and back down, out again at Cape Blanco, back around Coos Bay, and then up. That's basically what our coastline looks like right here. All right, and then just so I know where it is, I'm gonna go ahead and shade in my ocean, just to kind of give me some bearings on my map. So just like we did for our sky over Mount McLaughlin, I'm using the side of my lead, not the point of my lead. So I get nice even coverage here. You could also use a block crayon if you wanted to. If you are worried about getting even coverage with a colored pencil. Just make sure we don't get any ocean up onto our land. We don't want to have a tsunami on the coast here. is my ocean. Now before I shade in my land, I am going to put some geographical features and landmarks on the rest of my map. So I'm going to start over here on this eastern side of my map. And of course, what do I have over here? I have a whole lot of mountains. So the Cascade Range comes right down in here. And so just kind of how we did Mount McLaughlin, I am just going to do some little triangle shapes here with a brown pencil. The second one here, I'm going to give kind of a funny like spiky top because what mountain is that? That's Mount Thielsen there. So Diamond Lake will go over here. Crater Lake is just to the south. We'll put a little mountain in right here. And then south of Crater Lake, we of course have Mount McLaughlin with its little gouge taken out of its side. And 
Maybe this map was done in the summer, so there's no snow on the mountains. <laughs> we have to leave a bunch of room over here for Upper Klamath Lake. So we wanna leave a little gap in our mountains. So we have room for that big, beautiful lake there. When we get towards Ashland, it starts getting more mountainous. Okay. If you want, you can go and you can add a little more of your Lighter brown to your mountains. Give them a little bit of character. go ahead and I'm going to start putting in some of the water because when we get to the western side this is where all the rivers are draining to so I kind of want to get the rivers in place before I put in the mountains of the coast range so I'm not trying to draw rivers through a mountain okay so over here right next to our Mount Thielsen we have beautiful Diamond Lake. Big lake, not as big as Crater or uh, Upper Klamath. Then, right tucked in these mountains here, because it used to be a mountain itself before it blew its top. We have Crater Lake. And remember, Crater Lake is almost perfectly round. At least it appears that way when we look at it. Okay. And then over here on the east side of the mountains, we have Upper Klamath Lake, which isn't a round, naturally formed lake like these two guys are. This one is a man-made reservoir. So it's a little bit of a funky shape. So Kind of round and wide down here at the southern end. But then it kind of comes up and it kind of ducks in and it comes back out as it kind of follows the riverbed. But of course it overlaps the riverbed now. big long reservoir for drinking water and irrigation farming okay so we have our lakes here on the eastern side of our map now what we need to do is put in the rivers so the Klamath River flows in to Klamath Lake here goes up and back down towards Klamath Falls and then there's a couple branches of the river that come out this way and they flow into California. Okay and then from Crater Lake of course we have the Rogue River that just starts as a little spring out here in the mountains and it comes down here and then once we get just east of Mount McLaughlin, we have this reservoir, which is, of course, Lost Creek Lake. A medium-sized lake, a bit smaller than Diamond Lake. And the river keeps going, and it just kind of meanders through here. 
and the Rogue River is going to meet the sea right about here at Gold Beach. So we're going to kind of dip down when we come up through the mountains before meeting the ocean here at Gold And then back up river a little bit, we have a couple creeks, right, that feed in to the Rogue River. So we have Big Butte and Little Butte Creek. And we're gonna go back and label all of these. So if you don't remember it, that's okay. I'm gonna go back and write them in. And then coming along from Medford here, we have Bear Creek and out here, there's Evans Creek. And then of course we have the Applegate River, which feeds in and down here we have Applegate Lake too, which is another reservoir that sits on the river. And coming out near Diamond Lake, or starting from Diamond Lake, we have the North Umpqua River. So that's going to kind of go along, as the name suggests, the north side of our map. And it just kind of goes along up to here. And the South Umpqua River really meanders around quite a bit. And then they meet up together. kind of take off up this way into the coast range. Now between the Umpqua and the Rogue River, we have the Coquille River, which is going to come out right about here at Coquille. So that guy starts right around here and just kind of gently wends his way to the coast. Okay. One more. Starting up here in the coast range. Oh, actually two more. Oh, so many rivers where we live. Okay, starting here near Applegate River, we have the Illinois River, which kind of winds through the mountains and meets up with the Rogue. And down here in the very southern tip of Oregon, is the Chetco River, which comes out here at Brookings. There we go. Those are the major ones. Except, oh my goodness, you guys, I almost forgot. Over here, what's this lake? Almost very emigrant lake. Can you believe it? All those water slides. Okay, let's put in a few more mountains now. So we've got the Cascade Mountains here. And you remember this mountain chain that comes along the south side of the map? That is the Siskiyou Mountains. So, mountains coming up here. Now, of course, near Emigrant Lake, we have another important mountain where we went on a very fun field trip this year, and that is, of course, Mount Ashland. So that is to the west of Emigrant Lake. It's on the west side of Ashland. So there's Mount Ashland there. And we'll do some more little mountains and the Siskiyous here. And 
into the apple gate. And then when we get out here past Applegate Lake, we are no longer in the Siskiyous anymore. The mountains are gonna start running north-south again. And we call those the what? The Coast Range. Make this one a little bit bigger. He's the start of the Coast Range there. Okay. The Coast Range are smaller mountains than the Cascades. The Cascades is our big volcanic mountain range that goes north to south across Oregon. The Coast Range is still a good sized mountain range, but they're much older and worn down than the Cascades are. We still have quite a few active volcanoes in the Cascade Range, like Mount Shasta, Mount Hood, Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier. But uh, in the Coast Range, you don't, because they are just so old. They're like Mount McLaughlin, which is in the Cascade Range, but is still an extinct volcano. Mountains going up here. So, yeah, if you wanted to make your Coast Range Mountains smaller than the Cascade Mountains, that's pretty accurate. And then you go all the way up the coast of Oregon. I grew up near Portland and boy, we still had to get around those coast range mountains to get to the beach. Okay, I feel like my Cascade Mountains are a little lonely. They're not as, they're not as impressive as they should be. So we have lakes, rivers, mountains. So our next step is just to shade all of this in. And then we're going to label. All right, so to shade, and I'm just gonna use the side of my green I'm going to start over here on the east, just kind of like how we did the grass below Mount McLaughlin a couple days ago. So again, notice I'm going in one direction and I'm making my pencil strokes nice and even. I'm not switching and going a different way. I'm going to pick a direction and stick with it. Doesn't have to be dark because I still want to see all those lovely mountains and bodies of water that I drew in there. I'm going to keep my shading within my coastline. Don't want to landslide into the ocean. Just 
It's like I don't want a tsunami on the beach. go back and layer in some of my bright green. Give it some interesting color. Because boy, do we have a lot of colors in Oregon. We are one of the most geographically diverse states in the country. Because we really have it all here. We've got mountains. We have prairies, we have forests, we have deserts, we have beaches, everything, grasslands, little microclimates everywhere in Oregon. Okay. Another thing that you can do, if you wanted to, is you can kind of take a look at what our land looks like in Oregon. A lot of people, not from our state, when you say Oregon to them, they think rain, all the time rain. And we know that's not true. Here in the Rogue Valley, we don't have rain all the time. We are still pretty green in the Rogue Valley because we have a lot of irrigation, we do a lot of farming. But when you get east of the Cascades, there's something that happens called a rain shadow, which means that the clouds come in off the ocean and clouds are heavy with water, right? Well, they kind of get stuck up against these big mountains and they can't go over because they're so heavy with all that moisture. So they drop all their rain here in the valley and they lighten up and then they can go over the mountain. But then once they get here, there is no rain left in them so what happens is that on the dry side of the mountains, the land is not as green. This is where our high desert starts, is over here, east of the Cascades. So you might wanna draw in a bit of that rain shadow. And then we're still, we still get a fair amount of moisture here in the Rogue Valley, but the coast, oh my gosh, and the coast range is way more wet than we are. Have any of you ever driven to the coast on a hot summer day where it's like 100 degrees in Medford and then you get to the coast and it's foggy and it's barely 70 degrees and you feel cold well that's part of the rain shadow effect all that fog and stuff backs up here behind these coast range mountains and it keeps the coast nice and cool and also you have that nice cool ocean air coming in all the time and of course when we do our map of all of Oregon then you would see that farther north, like where we have the Willamette Valley, it's very green through there and very wet. And we look practically like a desert compared to that part of Oregon. So I have my very wet coastline, lots and lots of moisture, lots and lots of green. You can kind of blend in this line. And then I have this valley in here, the Umpqua Valley, the Rogue Valley. And that's still green, still fertile, but definitely not as much moisture as the coast gets. And then east of the Cascade Mountains, it gets a lot drier. And if I was to keep going over towards Lakeview, And over that way, it would get very, very dry. So 
So there we go. Now all that's left is the labeling. Okay, help me remember here. Let's start up north. We have the north. Kumquaa. River, and we have the south, Umpqua River, and then this one right here is the Coquille River. Be careful with the spelling of Coquille, it's a tricky one. Pause the video, make sure you've got it right. And of course, this big guy is the Rogue River. Make sure you spell Rogue right too. It's R O G U E. Be careful with that because if you flip the U and the G, you have the Rouge River instead of the Rogue River. All right, this is the Illinois, which has a silent S at the end. And the Chetco, thankfully just as it sounds. Gate, which we should all know how to spell at this point, right? I'm going to go ahead and get all the rivers and creeks in first, then we'll go back and do lakes and mountains. Let's see. This right here is Bear Creek. You can just abbreviate CK. This is Graves Creek. All of these little creeks and rivers come together and make the Rogue River even stronger. And then over here we have Little Butte Creek. And Big Butte Creek. And then this right here is the Klamath River. Okay, now for the mountains, we have the Cascade Mountains. Coast Range. That's all it's called. It's not the Coast Range Mountains. It's just the Coast Range. And running along the south here, we have the Careful with that spelling of Siskiyou, that's another tricky one. 
okay. Over here we have Upper Klamath Lake. And of course, why don't we have Lower Klamath Lake in here? <gasps> because it's in California. We're not doing a map of California. And this beauty up here is Crater Lake and Dime. Down here we have Lost Creek Lake Emigrant, just like an immigrant on the Oregon Trail, starts with an E. here. Squeeze him in. Applegate Lake. That darn Applegate family getting everything named after them. Okay. And then we can name a few of the mountains. So here we have where our funky pointy topped mountain is Mount Thielsen. Careful with that spelling. And then the big one here is Mount McLaughlin. And this guy right here Now, are there other landmarks that could have gone on our map? Absolutely. And this is a big choice that map makers always have is what to include and what not to include. Like over here, just a little bit east of Eagle Point, I could have made table rocks over here. Or over here, just, or sorry, west, west of Eagle Point, table rocks. Over here, east of Medford, I could have made Roxiana. So there's always little things that we can choose to add or not include in our maps. But I think that this gives somebody who's not familiar with our area a good idea of what the land is like in Southern Oregon and what they might expect to see when they come here. And also, I'm sure your hands are tired of labeling. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed making this map. Can't wait to see it. Your guys' drawings have been absolutely beautiful and I'm still really proud of the work that you've been doing. I, it just makes my day to log into Google Classroom and to see all the wonderful things that you have created. So keep it up and we will meet again tomorrow for our writing about Southern Oregon geography. Have a good day.